So I'll add another layer. This time I'm going to increase its resolution a little bit more. And I'll call this one wingback extrusion. Start out with a cube again. Okay, so now we have this little extra bit right here. And we have to decide what all we're going to do with it. So at this stage, it's mainly just uh, detail work. It's mostly what we're going to be doing. I'm going to grab my extrude tool and I'm going to use this rectangular shape here and we're going to carve a little groove in like that. Only we're going to be a bit more careful about it than that. So when you're using this method there's a couple things you need to be aware of and that is how you fine-tune the shape of this. So you'll see this cut I've made does two things. It goes down into the model a certain amount and it tapers by a certain amount. So to control the depth, that's just your brush strength. So you see if I make my brush strength very low, hardly anything happens. If I make it very high, we get a very deep carve right there. And as far as the width of that inset you saw, that's this right here. So for this one I want a little bit of a narrower width, so I'll make this about 8. And I'm holding down control because I want to extrude into it. Just about like that. So like I said, there's a lot of things that we, we, we can do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make it look like it's somehow attached to each of these shells right here. And to make this a bit easier, I'm going to turn on symmetry. But the problem is the default symmetry plane isn't going to work for us. So, if I look at it from the side and I enable symmetry, first off I want symmetry along the y-axis, but you'll see this yellow line. I need the yellow line to be up here. So, if I hit S and I choose pick, then I can choose a custom location for this plane. So I'll pick right about there, that looks about halfway. So with symmetry enabled now, I'll grab my cube primitive and I'll make it much, much smaller. If I look from the top, I can use this outer ring and that'll rotate it based on perspective. You'll see, if I try to turn it on any of the three main axes, it can be a little bit hard to wrangle it into being exactly the rotation I want, which is essentially facing the direction of the shell. But if I go to the top view, doing so becomes very easy. So you see how that intersection line is at a weird angle right now? I don't want that. So if I turn it, it becomes parallel to the side of the shell. So then I'll hit Add. Now to make this a little bit different from the uh, connection braces I just added here, I'm going to turn on Use Filet. Now the newer version of 3D Coat I understand has this option for nearly all of the primitives. If you're using 4.5 or lower it's only going to have it for the cube. So there we go, something like that.
I'm going to turn off symmetry for this part. Now you may be wondering why I turned off symmetry to make this. Here's what happens if you try that with symmetry turned on. You get this kind of double layering effect. So that's why I had symmetry turned off there for a second. So I'll use the sphere tool and I'll just click, click, and there you go, we got some bolts. And then down in here, let's see, down in here I will go back to extrude and I'll use the, uh, the drag mode right here and I'll hold down control and just make some inset bolts like that. Now you may notice some ugly looking uh, faceting going on around there just because it's such a tiny detail and the volume doesn't have the resolution to accommodate it. Uh, don't worry about that because if it's that small of a detail it's important to consider where you're going to be viewing the object from. In the final uh, game that this is going into, this object will never be larger than about this big on screen. That's the closest that the user will ever get to see it. And as you can see, that fastening pretty much disappears. So if it looks okay from a distance like this or whatever distance you need to be looking at it from, then you don't need to worry about it. There's no need to add unnecessary amounts of re resolution. All right, I was just working on the fins right here and I see that uh, I want them to look more like they're part of the larger structure. Right now they look like they have just been kind of placed there and they don't fit in with anything. So I'm going to add in some holes right here, a little bit of a gap that they can fit into to make it look like this whole structure was kind of built with them in mind rather than them being added in later as an afterthought. So to do that, I'm going to go to the wing center and I'm going to hit uh, shift R again, increase the resolution. And I'm going to use my extrude brush one more time. But this time I'm going to use, instead of, even though these are all going to be straight lines, I'm going to use the closed spline tool because that one actually lets me uh, see my selection area before I use it. See, with the polygon one, as soon as you close the loop, it performs the action. We don't want that. Whereas with this one, I can edit it and fine-tune it before I actually apply it. There's a good reason for this, which you'll see in a second. I'm going to hide the wing front for right now. The reason why I want to be able to preview this before I use it is that if I try to use it right now and hit enter, What it does is it applies it, but it doesn't apply it if there's in any area where there's something in the way. If I take out that fin, you see, it didn't apply it where we couldn't see it because the fin was in the way. So I want to have this shape, I want to make the shape while I can still see the fin and then I want to hide the fin so I can then apply my extrusion. And this one's going to be pretty deep and it's going to be pretty big. Thinking maybe 18. There we go. Now it looks like there's actually a spot for that fin to exist. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side now.
perfect.